So good evening, everyone. Uh, we will be uh, continuing our BOA PG lecture series, and in the month of November, the second lecture is uh, basically on the pediatric ophthalmology. It's uh, the most difficult thing we have in our uh, OPD is to examine a child, and then it becomes more difficult when you want to examine a child and give a refraction to the child because there are so many queries come and if there is no senior around or even sometimes our seniors are clueless that what is to be done for this patients so uh, we will be dis discussing the uh, the simple case scenarios which appear complicated in our opd and to uh, explain that we have with us dr krutisha dr Kruti Shah is a mumbai based pediatric ophthalmologist and she is also attached to cooper hospital and the best thing is she has a very keen interest in teaching PGs and she will be, uh, I hope she will be a regular teacher in our, and regular speaker in our BOA lecture series. So welcome Kruti, over to you. Uh, can you please start sharing the screen? I'll do that. Thanks Dr. Sumit for such a warm welcome. And it's my uh, privilege to teach here. So I hope my screen is visible. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, BOA. Thank you, Dr. Swapnesh Savant, and thank you, Dr. Sumit. So, as Do Sumit said, that refractive errors in children and spectacular prescription is one of the most challenging uh, topic in pediatric ophthalmology. I've tried making it simplified, but uh, please tell me. We'll make it more interactive and let the session be more interactive. Okay, so uh, let's start with it. Oh, it froze. Okay. So tell me a fun fact. Um, when was the glasses first ever prescribed in history of ophthalmology? Anybody? All of you, either you can ask to unmute or you can just put in the chat box your answers, if at all you want. to. Okay. So this, yeah. So this is, it was first prescribed in 1266. Okay, and Friar Roger Bacon used a part of glass sphere to magnify the prints in the book. So, and this is how the glasses were prescribed later. So next, okay, I'll just run through the classifications of all the refractive errors, but it is all very well given in your book. And uh, so classification of myopia, we go with that first. Based on anatomy, you have axial curvatural index. I've put important next to axial. Uh, to stress the point that it is one of the most commonest cause of progressive myopia and uh, which is with the good news to that is that it is under control it can be controlled with the help of atropine eye drops which is one of the most miracle drops in pediatric ophthalmology atropine 0.01 percent of course that's beyond uh, uh, beyond the scope of the lecture but i but it's worth a mention the next is based on degree of myopia, which is low, like uh, low myopia, less than two, intermediate two to six diopters, high is six to eight, very high is more than nine. Pre myopia is a condition where the diopter, where the myopic diopters is less than one, but the child would also have a sibling history that the sibling would be wearing myopic glasses based on the age of onset so congenital congenital juvenile childhood school early adult onset adult onset based on structural changes simple physiological so physiological includes night myopia or pseudo myopia that is because of accommodative spasm pathological or degenerative and syndromic so most commonest syndrome associated with myopia is down syndrome now, based on progression is progressive myopia, permanently progressive, temporary and stationary progressive. Again, classification of hypermetropia. So based on anatomy, axial index, curvatural, degrees of hyperopia. So plus 0.5 to plus 3, moderate is 3.2. So anything more than 3 diopters and plus 5. High is more than plus 5 diopter based on accommodative power. So that is total, which is latent and manifest. So manifest is uh, facultative and absolute which means absolute, which means that it is present and it cannot be corrected by the accommodative power of the child. And facultative, he, the child would put in accommodative efforts and would uh, correct it by himself. Astigmatism, as you, really, as you clearly know, it's regular, irregular astigmatism. So regular is with the rule, uh, vertical axis more than horizontal, against the rule, horizontal more than vertical, and oblique in which they are not following uh, the 
principal meridia but they are 90 degrees to each other so example the best example is 45 and 135 and classification based on refractive error so that is simple myopic hypermetropic astigmatism compound myopic hypermetropic and mixed now what are the difficulties faced during the assessment of refractive error in children so children pre verbal children or pre school children who are not uh, able to read even if you give them picture chart they are not very uh, they cannot comprehend not, not majority of them do not cooperate sometimes so sometimes they are not in mood that i don't want to read i don't want to do it i don't want to do the test subjective testing is again not very reliable in children because they do may, they may stop reading just for the sake of it and difficulty to hold their attention for a longer time so solution would be make the child very comfortable create a good rapport be very patient the key to success is excelling the test called cycloplegic retinoscopy so i would suggest all of you should 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 practice retinoscopy especially for children if you want to give correct glasses and never hesitate to repeat the test if you're not sure every case is individual and you can perfect refraction in children with experience so screening for refractive error one of the most commonest and easiest test to do is bruckner's test so you make the room dark okay ask the patient to be seated at arm's length if the child is really small you can ask the child to sit in the mother's lap and a direct ophthalmoscope with the maximum uh, light the uh, and the filter should be used and the light should fall on both the eyes so the patient should be looking at a distant object or if a child is little uh, at a, a higher age then you can ask the child to read from a distant vision and alternatively you can also go at 4 meters or 6 meters and test the child from that distance cycloplegia is not necessary for this test it's a screening test so the normal test so look at the image below is the reflex a red reflex which is symmetrical in both the eyes it is red in color the intensity and the uh, color is similar in both so look at this uh, bruckner's reflex look at the right eye it's showing a central opacity so that can be because of cataract or it could be a corneal scar um again look at the uh, the left eye it shows a white reflex so you would know many dds of uh, leukocoria so that can be retinoblastoma um retinitis uh, i mean rop or many more then uh, this is along with it there's a white so there is a uh, abnormal reflex in the left eye a whitish reflex but at the same time the eye is deviated inside so it is in strabismus this okay so now in this it's not a complete reflex but you see a superior crescent so this superior crescent is suggestive of myopia in this reflex you see uh there is no crescent but there is a straight line so this is suggestive of astigmatism and in this in this the lower one it's a inferior crescent that you see which which is suggestive of hyperopia now if you see the crescent the size of the crescent is different between the right and the left eye the left eye has a higher um has a higher crescent this means that there could be a presence of anisometropia so quick question to all the audience please uh, please do answer what could be the other uses of bruckner's test anybody anybody would like to answer you can type in the chat box whatever is the answer no rb screening the answer is rb screening that's what like one of yeah the... that is one that is good next media opacities perfect okay but more in children what would you look for any one more specific okay so fixation in the child you can look for whether it is central steady maintained uh, accommodative detection you can do and also its quantification so how do you do it is basically you ask the child to look at distance and when the child looks at near okay the accommodation reflex is stimulated and the crescent would appear would be inferior crescent and also to check whether cycloplegia is complete so when you are detecting accommodation if 
the accommodation is lost okay or if the if the cycloplegia has worked then you wouldn't see an inferior crescent okay so cycloplegic retinoscopy why is it important okay accommodative power of children is very high it rapidly decreases with age thus the degree and extent of accommodation is variable with each child and it influences the refractive error this means that when the okay when the child is accommodating a emetropic eye can become myopic or a myopic child can become more myopic or a hyperopic child will become less hyperopic so it's very important that cycloplegia should be achieved and again as we said mentioned before that subjective refraction is not very reliable in small children and post midriatic test can be avoided if your cycloplegic retinoscopy correlates with your dynamic refraction we would be seeing some case scenarios later but uh, yeah but a quick run through cycloplegic reagents i mean sorry cycloplegic agents so atropine 1% is one of the most strongest cycloplegic agent used in children more than 1 year why because the blood brain barrier is still forming ointment is preferred as compared to um, drops because most of the times the children start crying when you put the drops and the drops the effects are lost so dosage is once in night into 3 days and drops is like so three nights basically drops is two to three times a day for three days all different books say different but in our clinical practice we we usually use ointment and that is once in night into three days cycloplegic effect is 7 to 21 days uses child with esotropia any child with esotropia that you see for the first time has to undergo atropine refraction and less than 10 years or any child less than 3 years of age side effects greasy effect of ointment and always educate the mother that when they are putting at home if you experience fever like if the child experiences fever tachycardia or flushing basically flushing and fever then stop uh, stop the ointment and report to us okay cyclopentolate 1% haveners dosage that is drops are instilled three times at 10 minutes interval peak effect is seen at 60 to 90 minutes cycloplegic effect is see is remains for 3 to 4 days this why is all these cycloplegic effect important because when they are going to school it is difficult for them to read and write so you have to educate the mother beforehand that they have to go and talk in the school about this side effects include burning and stinging and very rarely hallucination hallucinations and dizziness have been reported so it is never given for home dilatation so which are the drugs which are given for home dilatation the preferred one is homatropine sorry okay and uh, very very rarely dry side effects have been seen with them it which is allergy and what do you do for these side effects you can give an any antihistaminic systemic antihistaminic and they should be fine in 3 days okay and tropicacil is is a very weak very weak cycloplegic so if you are seeing elder children or myops above 12 years or if the children are coming for follow ups again in elder children then you can um, dilate them with tropicacil or tropicamide and less than 1 year you can use the same drops that you use for rop screening which is tropicacil 0.5 to 1% phenylephrine should be 2.5% and cyclopentolate 0.5 to 1% So now, what are the differences between the children and adults for refractive error correction? Like, why do we say refractive error is a challenge? Like, correction is challenge in children and not adults. So the main problem is emetropization, which I will explain in the next slide. So that process is still active. The working distance for infants and toddlers is much lesser compared to the children who are going to school. Pre-verbal children and preschool children again, there's a difficulty in assessing the visual acuity. the picture charts are available but how far you would be relying on the answers of children is a questionable associated there are strabismic and binocular disorders which also has to be tackled as the as the visual cortex is plastic at this age so emetropization continues till 6 years of age it is very rapid in the first 3 years so at birth the actual length is 16.8 mm and it starts rapidly growing in the first 18 months and the axial length growth is about 3.7 to 3.8 mm and in the next 5 years it it grows by 1 mm and in the next 10 years it grows again by 1 mm mean keratometry is 56 diopters which becomes adult around 
uh, adult uh, size of 43 diopters around 12 years like by 6 years you achieve the maximum but in between 6 to 12 the fine tuning is going on and same way goes with lens power fusion and stereopsis is achieved by 6 months of age that is gross stereopsis adult level you would achieve by 5 to 7 years okay so there are these ao guidelines which are given for the correction as children uh, do not read so if the child is if the child is iso having isometropia that is similar refractive error in both the eyes uh, what do you do so myopia less than 1 year if it's more than minus 5 please correct 1 to 2 minus 4 correct 2 to 3 minus 3 correct now hyperopia is little different okay if there's no manifest deviation that could be exotropia or esotropia any of them plus 6 uh, and more correct plus 5 and more correct plus 4.5 more correct but with esotropia it drastically if the hyperopia you detect of 2.5 even that becomes significant in less than one year and same follows for the other age groups astigmatism meridional amblyopia is very difficult to correct and therefore the threshold for astigmatism is less in pediatric children or in sorry in children um, therefore it is 3 and not 5 as you see in myopia or 6 as you see in hyperopia and n isometropia so this is uh, very important like n isometropia in children is correctable as compared to adults they can accept more of nic cornea their eyes can get adapted to it faster and therefore amblyopia can be treated better if an isometropia is picked up at earlier age and therefore myopia of minus 4 if the an isometropia of minus 4 between two eyes you correct it minus 3 in 1 to 2 years and minus 3 or more in 3 years of age group hyperopia again plus 2.5 plus 2 and plus 1.5 astigmatism 2.5 2 and 2 so these are all gross guidelines which have been given as again i would say pediatric is individual and you will learn with experience and these are aios guidelines they are not very very um, uh, famous but definitely they are very similar to ao guidelines except 3 years of age where they are saying myopia if it's minus 2 please correct okay which is or which was minus 3 or more in uh, according to ao guidelines okay so i'll be discussing all the case scenarios ahead and you will understand how it is and how to go about okay so there are various important points for prescribing glasses i will go according to refractive errors so hypermetropia um, just one second yeah okay a patient with hypermetropia with esotropia give full correction after subtracting for working distance so so cycloplegic effect if present you have to not correct for cycloplegia you have to give it with the correction child requiring a spectacle of plus 5 diopters or more or an older child requiring hypermetropia correction will take time to adjust the glasses so give the amount uh, give the refraction which it can accept undilated okay and slowly step up the glass power uh, every 3 to 4 4 to 6 months okay um in children less than 6 years hyperopia can be undercorrected why are we undercorrecting and how much will you undercorrect so around one diopter you can undercorrect to ensure a stimulus for emetropization is present but at the same time you make sure that you giving the amount of refraction that is required for that mean age group okay which is which we discussed in the uh, guidelines and lower hyperopia less than 1 diopter is a dicey situation you give it only in the children which complain of asthenopia or esotropia or amblyopia so let's take one case this is a 5 year old child okay who walks in your clinic with esotropia saying present saying esotropia or the deviation is present since 1 year of age and they have not tra taken treatment before vision in the right eye is 69 left eye is 612 you decide to do cycloplegic refraction which cycloplegic agent you would use anybody would like to answer atropin correct okay so now we continue that same question 
So cycloplegic retinoscopy, you uh, you did for that child, and at one meter distance, you along with atropine ointment as cycloplegic agent, you found right eye was four diopter sphere with 0.5 cylinder at 80, and left eye was just plus five sphere. So what uh, refraction would you like to give? Anybody, or you can type also. Sumit, you'll have to help me with that because I can't get a out of full screen. Anybody? Full cycloplegic correction. Yeah. So, anyways, I have already answered it. Your, uh, but yeah, you're right. Full glass prescription you have to give. We are just correcting for the working distance. Okay. So that is. So we had four diopters. Working distance is one meter. So you will correct for that minus one. So minus, so an atropine again gives you uh, one diopter of latent uh, accommodation that you would not correct. So plus four diopter sphere will give, become plus three. Cylinder remains same. And in the left type, plus five becomes plus four. Okay. And this was a case of accommodative esotropia. So even at the age of five, you should always go for atropine correction with esotropia. Okay. You can see the difference with the glasses, her, uh, lies, her eyes are aligned. Let's go to next case. So this is a nine-year-old girl complaining of difficulty in copying from board and doing homework. Okay. And she's come to you for the first time again. You have checked anterior segment normal, posterior segment normal, undilated refraction. So with you can do it with dynamic retinoscopy or uh, auto, auto ref. So right eye, it showed plus two diopter sphere and plus one cylinder into 170. Okay. I think I've already answered. Anyways, uh, so the vision was 612. Okay. And left eye was plus 3.5 with plus 1.5 cylinder 180 and the vision was 618. So when you did a dilated refraction with cyclopent, Okay, it gave you plus 5.0 with one cylinder. I mean, so the sphere remains same. I mean, sorry, the cylinder remains same. And left eye, the sphere with 3.5 became plus six. So 1.5 cylinder and 180. This means that he she was using some facultative hypermetropia, which is now become manifest as you've done cycloplegia. So in such patients, always do post midriatic test. Okay, and why? Because if you give complete correction, they will not be able to accept it in the first go. So give correction that the child accepts undilated. So now you know what is the high, what is the maximum refractive error that she has. So right eye is around plus five and left eye is around plus six. Okay, and what she was reading with your undilated was plus two in right eye and left eye was plus 3.5. So this means Okay, that facultative hypermetropia, as I mentioned, is around three in right and left in uh, and left is 2.5. Okay, and increase the power of lens and steps. So every four to six months, you assess and you try putting, try do, doing a dry refraction, try putting more, try pushing more plus. Okay, and initiate amblyopia therapy the first follow up because the vision is 612 and 618. Fine. Now we go to astigmatism. So astigmatism should be corrected as earliest to prevent meridional myopia because it is one of the toughest myopia, uh, toughest amblyopia. Sorry, uh, meridional amblyopia. I don't mean myopia. Uh, meridional amblyopia because it's toughest to correct. Astigmatism associated with spherical power should be corrected. Uh, oblique astigma astigmatism again always deserves correction. Please and please correct it if it's borderline. According to guidelines, you can repeat the retinoscopy after six months and decide. If you get the same readings, please correct astigmatism. And if you have more than one diopter uh, in a child four years and above, has to be prescribed. The glasses have to be prescribed. And if it's less than one diopter, you take it. You do so the prescription depends on symptoms and the vision of the child. Okay. So again, a case scenario, what will you do in this child? A three-year-old child comes to you with a chief presentation of a small head tilt to the right. So you measure the right head tilt, it's around 10 to 20 degrees. You evaluate the child, her extraocular movements are full, head tilt test is negative. So this means there is no strabismus, cover test shows orthophoria. 
okay and you have ch- you have done the neck movements also there is no torticollis okay cycloplegic retinoscopy is 1.5 into 180 at 180 right eye and left eye is plano slit lamp and fundus examination is normal what will you do anybody you can type in the chat box so there are options observe or give glasses what will you do yeah. now you have 50% oh you already answered sorry what was the answer anybody answered no no one answered you okay so you so oh sorry this is uh, no 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 this was the other child okay so in this you would give glasses why because there's a small head tilt small small head tilt present the head tilt is because of the cylinder okay so you will give glasses in this child now the next question was this like if there is no small head tilt so, and rest the whole scenario remains constant then what would you do so in this you would observe and ask the child to come again in 6 months time okay now this question a 2 year old child with anterior and posterior segment normal with dilated refraction right eye is 1.25 sphere and 2.5 sill at 180 and left eye is minus 3 sphere with minus 2.5 sill at 180 and they you have repeated this so they have come with the same values after 6 months what would you do anybody and why maybe so the two year old child anyone yeah, you want to give options uh, kruti uh, so you would give glasses as it is written or you would again want to observe for 6 months more oh, dr sheetal wants to say, say that she will give glasses sheetal it's absolutely correct you should give glasses in this child and why are you giving because uh, the cylinder is very very uh, significant in this child and you have also repeated this after 6 months so you should give glasses and there's been no change so myopia okay minimum correction to give maximum visual acuity should be the aim but it doesn't mean that you under correct the child infants and toddlers use near vision more than distance so they should be given glasses only if four or more diopters is present and slight under correction can be done for higher power because they are near because their working distance is only uh, small compared to the uh, dist- like compared to the high, uh, uh, children more than 4 years or 5 years or going to school full correction should be given once the child grows in ch- school school going children full correction should be given if if the myopia is more than one diopter if less than one diopter again it depends on associated symptoms if the child is complaining of asthenopia that is headache or eye ache or blur or rubbing of the eyes okay then maybe you can start as a part time wear and then you can push it for full time okay so again for this we'll see some scenarios so this is very simple someone would like to answer what would you do in a 3 year old child why am i taking two or three year old is because that's the most challenging part where it comes in Uh, so a three-year-old child with cycloplegic retinoscopy as below, working distance of one meter, and homoid eye drops at cycloplegic agent. So uh, right eye is minus two myopia with minus one cylinder, and left eye is minus two sphere with minus one at ninety. What would you do? So there are four options: A, you will give glasses; B, no glasses required; C, you will observe and repeat; and D, e, call at the age of five years. somebody is saying uh, observe and uh, repeat dr miti shah wants to say observe and repeat after 6 months and second answer uh, dr diksha wants to say she will call at the age of 5 years so okay. there are two options c and d okay so in this patient basically uh, you will observe and repeat after 6 months now why you don't call at 5 okay so this child has a borderline borderline myopia that is if you go like if you see the ao guidelines they say minus 2 or above so again it's 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 borderline and the child has a myopia present had it been minus 2 at one or two years of age you would have called you would have uh, said no glasses required maybe you would have called at age of 5 but it is present at age of my age of 3 that means emetropization process is towards completion or uh, let's say like the maximum part of emetropization has already happened okay uh, in the first 3 years 
so this child you as it is borderline you would still wait and see after 6 months if 6 months again you get the same one or little higher then you definitely prescribe i hope that answers your question or that your answer that you gave again this is an easy one a 10 year old child gets an eye checkup for the first time slit lamp and fundus is normal okay cycloplegic refraction is minus 6 sphere both eyes you prescribe her glasses with minus 1 diopter under correction minus 2 diopter under correction minus 1 diopter over correction or no correction made what would you do so you don't correct it you just give minus 6 what do you do either you give minus 5 or you give minus 4 or you give minus 7 or you give minus 6 can anyone answer that even option is fine you you just have to type a b c anyone uh aishwarya wants to say there is no correction made okay anyone else so 10 year old child with the minus 6 orthophoric correct orthophoric yeah sorry i have not said that orthophoric yeah. child is orthophoric so somebody wants to see they will give a minus 2 under correction then again no correction made uh so there are two d's and one b okay yeah. see um so yeah so the correct answer is d that is no correction made you give full minus 6 a myopic child a 10 year old going to school you have to give full correction had it been hypermetropia where they using accommodation and they used to use their accommodation you would have under corrected say by one diopters but for myopic child give full correction and 10 year old is still there is still plasticity present so you should correct fully okay now in this scenario if when would you give an over correction of minus 1 or maybe minus 1.5 same thing if the child had intermittent exotropia or exophoria to control that you would have over corrected the child so instead of minus 6 i would have given minus 7 or minus 7.5 depending on how much is he accepting without compromising the vision okay next one n isometropia again full correction should be given in a case of n isometropia to avoid amblyopia children tolerate n isometropia better than adults so you can give to a higher limit in adults maybe you would uh, correct n isometropia of minus 3 but in children you can give more than that maybe up to minus 8 minus 9 also it can be given in high anisometropia contact lenses can be tried to decrease nic cornea so this usually happens in cases of unilateral aphakia when you're still deciding to put an iol uh, so in uh, and the other eye is towards emetropia or a low myope or a low hypermetropia then in that case you can put a um, um, then you can use contact lenses adolescents may find difficult to tolerate high anisometropia then in such cases always check for diplopia first give an iso anisometropic correction that they can accept okay and then push the uh, remaining anisometropia at subsequent visits so you always check for diplopia binocular vision that is fusion with worth four dot test and then prescribe so again we would go to some scenarios a 4 year old child would start preschool okay or nursery and comes to you for routine checkup and dilated refraction is right eye minus 4 and left eye is minus 2 and she is orthophoric she or he is orthophoric what would you do give the correction under correct or observe so it's a 4 year old child with anisometropia minus 4 minus 2 any one out of 1 2 3 div s is 1 Okay. Anyone else? We'll wait for a minute. Anyone Sorry. else wants to answer? Uh, everyone for one. So luckily, everybody understood anisometropia. I'm happy, and the answer is correct. Okay. One more wheel taken. So eight-year-old child on first visit to your clinic with cycloplegic refra refraction has following reading: right eye minus two point five. Uh, spherical six six and left eye with minus nine diopter sphere you get six thirty six, so the glass prescription would be same as uh, in the question or you would under correct the left eye or you would uh, okay 
or you would under correct the left eye okay so the question is uh, will you under correct the left eye or you will give directly because the best corrected vision is 636 only with the minus 9 uh, diopter sphere so minus 2 minus 9 and and the child is 8 year okay uh, everyone is saying under correct no so you have to give full correction a child even if they are coming first time to you you have to push full correction and what with the diplopia kruti like with so much of yeah, if the child complains of diplopia anything in this case so usually 8 year old child will accept this this would happen at around 12 to 15 years of age and even if the 8 year old child corrects says that there would be diplopia then you under correct by one or two diopters but minus 6 what i have seen is minus 6 to minus 7 diopters of anisometropia they can accept okay so the full correction for the better vision so you can treat amblyopia yes okay and then after this after one month you can uh, call for amblyopia treatment depending on if there is any improvement in the left eye okay so this is what i was coming to glass adaptation every child should be assessed after one month of prescription for glasses to check if there is any symptoms as we were discussing about diplopia astenopia like you know if you're giving so much of anisometropic correction or if they also to check if there has been any vision improvement with glasses so say for the previous example if 636 became 6 uh, 24 then the amount of the, then the number of hours of amblyopia or patching you would give would decrease same way you always check for binocular alignment also like either the uh, the child is diverging with that or there is some exophoria which has been introduced or esophoria which has been introduced so amblyopia treatment should always be started after one month of prescription of glasses and making sure that the child has worn the glasses for one month and only then decide to start amblyopia therapy okay so types of spectacles um okay the first and foremost whether you have to see the frames are correct or not so there is a four point test to check if the frames are ideal that means the wire the eye wire and the temple wire the one which is fitting on the eyes the lower part and the temple wire should touch the ground when you keep the frames on a ground or a or a surface frames uh, should always be all four sides and there should not be frameless or semi rims uh, uh, given to the child i should be completely covered that means so that the child does not peep through the glasses plastic or acrylic malleable frames should be given because metal frames uh, can cause damage or skin abrasions glass material it has to be fiber because when they crack they crack like windshield and glass particles do not uh, hurt the eyes and there's no corneal uh, damage happening C39 coating is a very personal preference in order to avoid glare uh if you ask me i definitely give these glasses i definitely give uh, glasses with C39 coating blue filter lenses not required for children uh, the evidence says that blue filter glasses so basically blue filter glasses just uh, filter the blue light and that is required for um, for suppressing the melatonin melatonin secretion from the glands so that the child child's uh, what do you say the child sleep is not disturbed otherwise there is no further uh, benefit of prescribing blue filter lenses in case of bifocals the bifocal segment should bisect the pupils so when we will you give bifocals in case of pseudophakia or conversion excess esotropia in such cases the bifocal segment should always bisect the pupils unlike adults where it is just below the pupil okay and i would wish everyone happy diwali thank you for your attention if anybody has any questions then you can please ask me thank you kruti that was a really nice lecture full of examples so that is the clinical scenario that we keep on facing so we don't have many questions but there is a question here yeah how much uh, difference is required to do a pmt between undilated and dilated flash values so usually you take 3 days off like you do a pmt after 3 days Okay. I And unless unless if you've done with atropine, then you call after one week. Okay. 
I think he wanted to ask that um, like how much difference in the sense if the undilated and dilated values are almost okay. same or there is only one diapter difference, then do you need to call, uh, uh, yeah, that's what, the diapter value, like how much diapter that's value. Diapter value. Okay, yeah. fine. So if there's only one diapter value, then you go according to your cycloplegic retinoscopy. You do not call again. Okay. Anyone else? Any questions? Anything? Can you please suggest a book for refraction? Okay, you can. Can you? Okay, so there's a book by Borish. If you want to go for practical points, there are a lot of, it's very lengthy, but it's very good. Okay, by Borish. How do you prescribe glasses to an infant with the high irregular astigmatism? So, uh, yeah, it's a good question. So basically, irregular astigmatism in children, in uh, infants, you would wait till the child becomes one year of age. You would not prescribe because the, keratos, uh, the keratometry readings will still change. And you always correlate with a keratometer. So take a handheld keratometer and try correlating with it. Okay, then Shelly wants to ask that uh, the 10 year old child example where you said there is minus six diapter sphere and uh, we would, uh, and how will you do that? Like you, you will do a cyclopedic refraction first or what will you do? For minus six, as you as we answered that there, uh, there won't be any change, that example she wants. So, yeah, so any child, uh, any child has to undergo cycloplegic refraction. So you have to do a cycloplegic first. So uh, again, in a 10 year old child, they would give you correct answers. They would like read the charts properly. So you do a undilated refraction or a dry refraction. Try to correlate with your cycloplegic refraction. Along with that, you decide. Okay. Then there is how Priyanka. But, no. Sorry. Uh, yes. Sorry, but PMT would not be required in this child. You don't have to go in for PMT. Okay. Then the question is, how much anisometria can cause di diplopia? So it is. this is very individual, but uh, four, four to six diopters of anisometropia a child can easily take in unless and until they complain. So till six diopters, you don't have to worry. After that, you have to be very cautious. Okay. Then there is, <clears throat> how to go about a refractory error correction in a child with the bilateral ptosis, I suppose. Yeah. Tosis, does that mean that? Okay. So in those children, again, uh, you have to grade the tosis, mild, moderate, severe. And it is the same way as you go for a normal child. You don't have to differ, you don't have to change the number or the refractive error due to tosis. Okay. And if, if there is astigmatism getting induced because of the tosis, then it is better to operate the tosis early. Yes. So that depends on, again, mild, moderate, severe. So if it's correcting your visual axis, go in for ptosis surgery first and then again, reevaluate the child and give your uh, prescription, glass prescription. Okay. So Shmita wants to know in which cases we need PMT to be done. I think you explained that already. Yeah. More than one diopter difference, correct? Right. Uh, then after PMT, uh, in... Biperop, I think hyperopia. Which type of hyperopia are we correcting? Facultative or manifest? So again, this depends upon the age group. Like if it's a smaller age group, you're giving half of facultative and complete of manifest. But if it's like, you know, if the child is going to school, like say above seven, six, seven years, then you see how much are they accepting? Like if, uh, so when you call for PMT for this child and if you have given plus, okay, so I'll just give a hypothetical situation. If it is plus three and when you did your uh, cycloplegic refraction came around plus six, but, but if you push plus six, they may not accept it. So you just try on PMT adding more. If you're giving plus four, are they accepting without compromising the vision? So your objective test would be vision. If with plus four, if the vision is decreasing, don't give it, give plus three. Maybe in the next visit, you want to push it to plus four. I hope that answers the question. Yes, I think um, that's it. I think we are like anyone, any questions? We still have a time for eight, 10 minutes. So anyone wants to ask any, any questions? Any, uh, ah, yeah. The, Priti, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so the question is... In isotropia, what is more important? 
vision or deviation yeah okay so both are equally important if you give importance to deviation it's in the correction part so it depends on what type of esotropia you're looking for you're looking for accommodative esotropia definitely both are equally important and if you're not looking for accommodative esotropia again the amount of refraction cycloplegic refraction has to be uh, corrected amount of refraction has to be corrected so both have to be corrected equally you give importance to both you only see that you don't over correct so that there is no exotropia happening in case of accommodation which doesn't happen like practically nothing happens like that yes in non accommodative also you give full correction in the in the early age group okay early age group means pre verbal pre school why do we add minus power for intermittent exotropia okay so intermittent exotropia uh, in divergence excess type of intermittent exotropia it in, so um, okay it stimulates the fusional drive the convergence drive and so you the minus power stimulates the convergence drive so you should give and that will correct that will hold the exo the deviation happening for exotropia okay in convergence insufficiency as well which risk to give again bl i don't get it i don't know what can you please um, like, basin or basin out can you please uh, type the question fully it's difficult to understand with the short form basin or base out yeah. but in what what are you asking for is it for a um... basin or base out for what accommodation insufficiency accommodation insufficiency why would you go for prisms in accommodation insufficiency you would give prisms for convergence insufficiency i think we wanted to as the same oh. the question is same here yeah. yeah convergence insufficiency okay so convergence insufficiency base in or base out prisms this is what you're trying to ask yeah i think that the question okay so if you're giving it as a part of exercise you give it as a base out prism but if you but if the child has diplopia or there is a presence of exotropia then you given as a basin prism but prisms are at a very later stage first you start with exercises so you give convergence insufficiency exercises and then you decide for prisms okay priti i also wanted to ask a question uh, like how early can you prescribe a contact lens in the children like like till how early have you seen getting prescribed or have you prescribed so this totally depends upon the socio economic status of the child as well as the how the parents are you know are ready to take care we give it in aphakic children like because of pediatric cataract that we have operated even at age of 6 months to 1 year oh but then you have to educate the parent that how to take care of the uh, contact lenses report if you see anything abnormal immediately okay there is one more question how to detect and manage accommodation exists in a pediatric age that is out of this <laughs> out of scope of this lecture we'll do it in the next lecture maybe when sumit invites me again yeah fine so we'll do i think there are lot of questions on accommodation insufficiency conversion and esotropia we should have a separate class on esotropia itself yeah we can do fusional abnormalities or esotropia yeah, yeah we can do that 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 will be a separate lecture to answer your questions so i think we have answered most of the questions anything else you can like this video will be uploaded on the youtube you can still ask questions in the chat box there comment section there and we'll try and reach you back there okay and one more point i wanted to add please see child with glasses every 6 months okay for follow up don't call for one year every 6 months you have to see the child that again a very important point so uh, thank you
thank you everyone for attending thank you kruti for the nice lecture and thank you uh, boa team sapna sir pritam sir uh, dr ragini ma'am and everyone for uh, giving us the freedom to uh, continue our pg lectures uh, thank you all for attending youtube link will be shared on the group and uh, you will get it soon so uh, till then you can watch all the pg classes on the boa i talks plugged in it's our youtube channel and it's freely available there Thank you everyone good night thank you yeah thank you pruti